So it's been a rough couple of days. Uh, Bears fan base is not taking the start to the season well at all. Um, <laughs> I've actually had to kind of take a step back from uh, being online because it's just so angry. Like everybody's just at each other's throats. It's it's brutal, man. So you know, not only to I, I I've taken a few days out. Not only to get away from the hype machine or the hate machine, whatever it is, um, but also just to kind of keep my thoughts my own, you know, because I think that's important is to not get too caught up in what everybody's screaming about. So Bears start one and two. Um, pretty grim season outlook right now. Um, same thing last year, honestly. I think I made a video pretty similar to this after the Bears started 0 and 2. Um, a little bit better this time around, but we're still one and two after week three. Um, yeah, lots to talk about. So Bears fan base has been angry, calling out Ryan Poles, calling out Caleb Williams, Matt Eberflus, Shane Waldron, all that. Some of that's warranted. Um, some of it's not. Um, and there's a lot of revisionist history going on here. Um, the number one thing that I'm seeing lately is a lot of people freaking out because Jaden Daniels had an elite Monday Night Football game against the Bengals and Caleb Williams is still uh, finding his uh, footing. So that's honestly, yeah, it's fair to be like, oh, we should have taken Jaden Daniels. Look how much better he looks. What does Jaden Daniels have that Caleb Williams doesn't right now? A good offensive coordinator, an O-line that can protect him. Wow, it's almost like that's super important or something. And that that's becoming a trend in the NFL. You look at teams like the Packers and the Chiefs as well. When you have a clever offensive coordinator and an O-line that can block, that's more important than having great wide receivers. As long as you have wide receivers that can get the job done, that's all you need to run a good offense and a good quarterback, obviously. But you don't need basically what the Bears have, which is DJ Moore, Keen, and Allen, and Romo Dunze. Not saying that that doesn't help. Just saying that's not necessarily what you need. And that's what Caleb needs is a better... We, we need a good offensive mind for him, which I know is not uh, exactly the hottest take, but... If Jaden Daniels were on the Bears right now, he'd look like a lost puppy. That's the that's the thing. And that's what people need to understand is that it's not an apples to apples comparison. It's not the same thing. Jaden Daniels wouldn't be playing like he is now in the Bears and Caleb Williams wouldn't be playing like he is now if he were on the Commanders. It's just how it is. They're different situations, different contexts. It's important to realize that. On top of that, I also see people questioning the Darnell Wright draft pick. Um... People are like, oh, we should have taken Jalen Carter instead. Look how good he is on the Eagles. I thought people's big concern is that we haven't invested enough in the O-line. So you want to invest even less in the O-line? Like, you want to take a top 10 pick away? Who's our, who's our starting right tackle then in that situation? Larry Borum? So... People need to relax with that. And it's also, it's just, it, it's so early that people are, people are, they have, there are valid concerns and then there are overreactions. I think a valid concern has been Matt Eberflus in his third season, still not knowing what he's doing. Shane Waldron still having problems with, the same stuff we've been talking about. The personnel choices have gotten better. The play calls have been getting better. But also, and I think people haven't been talking about this enough, what if this Colts defense is really, really bad? And we still had a hard time. Like, people are saying that things are getting better, but are they? Because that's the easiest D-line we're going to face this whole year. And we still couldn't get a run game going. And we still couldn't block adequately enough for the QB. 
that shouldn't be happening. And maybe this Colts D-line is secretly amazing without DeForest Buckner. I, I doubt that. I'm sorry. But what, uh, what I'm scared about is that we're going to go in, especially against the Vikings. We still have two games against the Vikings and that aggressive D-line that they have. They blitz a lot. It's not looking good. I wouldn't be surprised if we got swept by the Vikings because this O-line is a disaster, man. It's really bad. It's probably the worst I've seen. And so it was revealed today that Donald Wright has a back injury that has been lingering for a while. Um, not surprising. He doesn't look like the same guy as last year. So that sucks. Uh, but that's something unforeseen. Like, people are crucifying Ryan Poles. Oh, why'd you pick Donald Wright? He sucks. Donald Wright was good when he's not injured. Um, there are ramblings that Tevin Jenkins is hurt, too. I guess that would explain why he also fell off of a cliff. But those are our only two, two good O-linemen. So now those two are handicapped. And we're left with Braxton Jones, Coleman Shelton, and Nate Davis, who are... I mean, Braxton Jones is all right, but the other two are bad, very bad, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I can't feel good about this season anymore, just, even if, even with Caleb Williams progressing, which he will continue getting better and better as time goes on, I think what scares me the most is that our schedule isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, and we're not nearly as good as I thought we were going to be. I look at this schedule and I have a hard time believing that we're going to beat teams that I thought we would beat no problem. Like the Cardinals. I don't know if we're going to beat the Cardinals. We face the Rams in a few days. I don't know if we're going to beat this Rams team because they just beat the 49ers and this Rams team is severely depleted. Like they're very injured and they still beat the 49ers. There's no chance that we're going to be able to do something like that. We just have to hope that we match up well against them and that somehow they don't bring their A game. You know, and, and these are good coaches we're facing. We're going to face Sean McVay. Oh, and also we face the 49ers in December. Like, it, 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 it's tough. It's tough. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like where this is headed. I, don't, I think that this season's going to end up being a six or seven win season and our struggles are still going to linger throughout the year and I think we fire Matt Eberflus after this year I thought we should have fired him after last year I, I don't if we don't make the playoffs this year there's no way he stays around like you gave him three years I'm sorry like I know you don't want to John Fox him but he is he is John Fox he is he deserves to be John Foxed he is John Fox. And uh, we are so lucky that Ben Johnson is still available. Like, we are really lucky he went back to Detroit for another year. Because if he didn't do that, I would be even more angry. Because I really want that guy as our next head coach. Just don't mess this up. Please. I mean, we already messed it up. But don't mess it up even more. We, um... I, I... This is about the result that I thought was going to happen if we kept Eberflus. Um, if you go back and watch my videos from December when some people were like, maybe we should keep Eberflus. And I was like, no, because we're going to have a new quarterback in all likelihood. And I was right. We're going to have a bunch of new pieces. We should just start fresh. We have good pieces on the defense. And uh, just you know, like, get a shakeup going. And that's the problem, is nobody... Everyone got blinded by the good defensive performance late in the year that they don't realize the problems that are going to hold a potential young quarterback back. And that's exactly what's happening. We somehow, with one of the best Bears rosters I've seen in a while, are in a position that we might finish this year with six wins. Or seven wins. Our, literally our only hope is that Caleb Williams somehow has a breakout game one of these weeks and just magically becomes an elite quarterback. But with how terrible this protection is, how bad the play calls have been, how non-existent the run game has been, and how tough our schedule looks, do you guys really think that's going to happen? So, 
yeah, it, it's it's going to be difficult. Uh, luckily, Keenan Allen's going to be back this week, so that could add another dimension to this offense that wasn't there before. Um, I like what I saw from Romo Dunze. DJ Moore, man, he is quiet quitting out there. He looks, he's just like giving up on routes halfway through. He's not, he's not giving the effort that we want from him, that we need from him as our wide receiver one, because he's a key cog to getting the other receivers open. Shane Waldron is calling some well-designed plays, believe it or not, where DJ Moore is supposed to be streaking open, go this way, take the corner with you, and then leave space for Romo Dunze. DJ Moore is running this, and then he's giving up halfway through, so the corner doesn't move. So then the corner jumps the route with Odunze, and that's why the, inter the second interception happened. And it's frustrating that this keeps... That, that this has become a pattern for three weeks now. That DJ Moore, who had 1,400 yards last year, just signed a, a four-year extension to keep us with the Bears until he's 31, is now out here taking plays off and being a, a bad teammate. Like, that's not your captain. That's not what you're supposed to do. I get being frustrated, but, like... You're not helping, dude. Like, you're really not. So, yeah. I'm uh, I'm just worried that this is going to be another uh, another wasted season. Um, I see Matt Eberflus making comments about... He, he was calling Caleb Williams' second interception. He was like, oh, it was an aggressive throw. We just have to talk to him about, you know, making sure that he makes the right decision. I'm like, it's bad that that was an aggressive throw. They better not do what they did to Justin Fields because they did the same thing. They coached the aggressiveness out of him because they were deathly afraid of throwing interceptions. You need him to throw interceptions because you need him to make that mistake and grow from it. That's 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 what that's that's how this works. That's how rookies are. They you can't you need him to still have that confidence. If you make him second guess himself, that's never going to go away. Example number 1 is Justin Fields because that's what they did to him. And he still hesitates so much. Like, you have a good defense. Interceptions aren't that big of a deal. The 200 club, it's dumb. Like, super dumb. I'm just, I, I have so many worries with this season now. It's only week three. I mean, everything could magically fix by the end of the year. I don't think that's going to happen. Some of these issues are gonna linger for a while um, most of which is the run game I don't know if that's ever gonna happen at this point <sighs> it just sucks that we're having another one of these seasons already so I mean let's just hope we can take advantage of this weaker part of our schedule that we still have over the next five weeks six weeks because when we get into the later half of the season November December we're probably only going to win maybe one or two games to end the year because that's it's it's tough. Like look at that schedule. It's tough. I I think I had us winning. I I I did a a look at our schedule and I re reassessed my prediction and I I genuinely think it's like 6 to 7 wins that we have on the year. And in that final stretch, we're only winning like maybe two games. And uh I hope I'm wrong. I want us to be wrong. But couple the how we've looked to start the year with the famous Matt Eberflus blown leads that you know are going to happen because it always happens. And I have a hard time believing that this team's going to gel and make the playoffs. And if they don't make the playoffs, you got to move on. You have to. I, I, and I don't know whose choice it was to keep Matt Eberflus. I don't know if that was from... The McCaskies, or if it was from Ryan Poles, or if it was from Kevin Warren, whoever's decision it was, like, huge mistake. And so many people recognized that that was a mistake. And they still did it, and it's happening exactly like we said it would. It's sometimes you need to just reset. And they were so afraid of... 
another naggy situation happening or letting go of a good coach too soon, which Foos isn't a good coach. Sometimes you need to to make a bold choice. And that's that's something the Bears don't do that I've been waiting for them to do. Ryan Poles will make bold choices. I thought that with Kevin Warren coming in, there would be some bold choices going on, but no. Just the same old doing things a year too late. And it's uh, it's a problem, and it's going to stay a problem. And I even said, we got to stop having this rookie quarterback and then fire the head coach after his rookie season and then start over. It's stunting the growth of our quarterbacks. This is five quarterbacks in a row that we've had to do this with. Justin Fields had to learn Nagy or had to learn Nagy's system as a rookie, and then they fired him, brought in Luke Getze. Mitch Trubisky had to learn Dowell Loggins' system, then they fired John Fox and his staff, and they brought in Matt Nagy. Jay Cutler had to learn like three different offenses when he was here. Rex Grossman had Dick Juron as his head coach his rookie year, and then he got fired. He had to learn Lovey Smith, whoever his OC was. I don't remember. It's just I'm tired of it, man. And and the obvious choice at this point to be like, oh, well, if you don't want that, then just keep Eberflus and deal with it. I don't want to do that <laughs> because it's going to hold us back. Like, I, and the best thing to do was to, and I'm I'm just so tired of shoulda this, shoulda that, shoulda, 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 shoulda. It's all, it's all useless. It's all revisionist. It's all with the benefit of hindsight. But even at the time, keeping Foos was a questionable move at best. It's only looked worse as time has gone on. Hi. <sighs> and um yeah, people are people are blaming I and and people are like, "Oh, it's Shane Waldron's fault the offense sucks." Who hired Shane Waldron? Hmm. Who hired Shane Waldron? It was Matt Eberflus. He hired Shane Waldron. That was his choice. So, yeah, um, we got the Rams this weekend. Then we got to face the Panthers, I think, and they might be dangerous with Andy Dalton. <laughs> I was hoping it'd still be Bryce Young, but nope, it's me, Andy Dalton, and uh, that's a win I had penciled in. I don't know if that's going to be a win anymore. So we'll see. Uh, a lot of these, like Cardinals, I thought the Cardinals were going to suck. No, nope, I'm kind of scared of the Cardinals. 49ers are going to be tough, obviously, but that's not until late in the year. Rams, I thought that was going to be an easy dub. With how injured they are, then they went out and beat the 49ers, and we went out and lost to the Colts. Uh, Vikings, I thought I, I thought that we would sweep the Vikings this year, but not looking at how Sam Darnold has started the year and looking at how our offense matches against their defense, I don't think we're going to beat them. Green Bay, I thought we'd beat Green Bay this year. We'll see. I don't think that's going to happen. Detroit is still Detroit. Like, I mean, we'll beat the Patriots, I think. No win is guaranteed anymore this year. I hope you guys understand that. No win the rest of this year is guaranteed. The Colts was the most slam dunk win we could have had. Anthony Richardson played the worst game that a quarterback is probably going to play against us this year. He looked awful, terrible, absolutely terrible. And their D-line, already weak, was missing DeForest Buckner. Their defense is awful in general. And we still lost. So, I have a hard time thinking that we're going to win any game easily this year. Um, oh yeah, we face the Commanders too. And they have Jaden Daniels, who's had a good start to the year. It's just frustrating, man. You know, we're doing this again. We're doing it again. Now, you know, it, it is too early to be dealing in absolutes here and being like, oh, well, you know, we're going to suck now and these teams we're facing are going to be good now. Rough stretches happen. They could figure it out. But, like, there's just too many problems for me to just think that they're going to magically flick a switch and it's all going to work. The only thing that could possibly change everything is if Caleb Williams goes super Saiyan and carries us to a victory every single week. 
Like, that's our best bet. Um, we need the defense to really lock in and, <laughs> and help us out. Because, yeah, this offense is going to be bad. Um, even if the play calls fix themselves, the O-line is it's going to be a problem all year. Like, it's, it's not going to get better. Same with the run game. I don't think the run game is going to magically fix itself. I do want. I, I do like that we've seen more Roshan Johnson, but even he was only averaging like four yards a carry. Like it's not like it's not like he was anything super spectacular. Ah, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. So I encourage you guys to do the same. Stay away from Bears social media because everyone's at each other's throats, man. Like some of them don't enjoy being Bears fans. I'm convinced. Like they're out here and they're like Tyson Bajent. We need to bring in Bajent. Like. You do not want to see this offense with Tyson Bajan running it. <laughs> and it is week three. That's the crazy part. It's been three games, and this has already gone south so fast. I, I do like that we still have a developing offense. Um, developing quarterback, sorry. There are, there are worse situations, I guess, we could be in, but... Man, this sucks. This sucks.